Okay. You can put your phone on mute if you won't be speaking, please. Si podrían poner su teléfono, por favor, en silencio. Al final tendremos la oportunidad de hablar sobre preguntas. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes. My name is Julio Rodriguez. I work at the Northwest Side Housing Center. Uh, trabajo con la organización Northwest Side Housing Center. Estamos aquí hablando sobre el tema de educación, um, sobre qué están viendo los directores, maestros y papás en el tema de educación. We'll be speaking today on a panel hearing from principals, teachers, and parents about what we're seeing in Belmont County. All right, today's agenda is going to be as follows. Uh, it'll be four to five. We'll have introductions. We will then hear about what devices we need, applications that we need for e-learning. And then from there, we're, we're going to talk about what the teachers are seeing attendance wise. And then we'll hear from parents. Vamos a empezar con introducciones. De ahí vamos a hablar sobre qué dispositivos electrónicos se necesitan. De ahí vamos a escuchar de los maestros, de qué están viendo en las clases, y finalmente vamos a escuchar de los papás, de sus perspectivas. So, for introductions, we're going to have um, the principal start off, if you could say your name, your school, and something funny about you. So, si podemos comenzar con los directores, su nombre, escuela, y algo divertido de ellos. We'll start with Ms. Tamanisi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, buenas tardes a todos. My name is Clarissa Dominici. I'm the principal of Marvin Chemist Children's Engineering School. Hola, me llamo Clarissa Dominici. Soy la directora de la escuela Marvin Chemers, um, Ingeniería para los Niños. Um, and it, I don't know that there's anything funny about me. Um, <laughs> oh, I will say, so... I, I do like to cook and I like to explore different recipes. I will say the hardest thing for me to do is to make tortillas. And we know how super simple that is and I just can't do it. So I don't know that that's funny. I'm a little bit embarrassed about that, but I just have to put that out there. Um, so algo que para mí es, no es cómico, pero digo, de todas las cosas, ¿no? Uh, me gusta cocinar mucho, cocino uh, cosas varias, distintas. Um, Pero lo que se me hace más difícil es lo que debe de ser lo más simple, que son las tortillas. Por alguna razón no me queda. Go ahead, Julio. Thank you. Uh, next, Mrs. Stewart. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Stacy Stewart. I'm the proud principal of Belmont Craigan Elementary School and Early Childhood Center. Um, one funny thing about me since this pandemic has started is I've been making uh, TikTok videos with my kids and with my teachers and having a whole lot of fun dancing doing it. Hola, buenas tardes. Ella es Ms. Stewart, la directora de la escuela Belmont Craigan Elementary, el centro de educación de preescolar. Algo divertido de ella es que ha hecho unos videos de, que se llama TikTok, que es como un video de música donde ellos pueden bailar y, y, y convivir. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Uh, Ms. Hernandez. Buenas tardes. Hello, everyone. I am the proud uh, principal of Shibboard Elementary School, Anita Hernandez. And something funny about me. Gee, you put us on the spot. <laughs> um, but I guess something funny about me is that I do not know how to whistle, and I wish I knew how to whistle. Oh, nice. My, my niece just said that to me. Uh, ella es Ms. Ms. Hernandez, es la directora de la escuela Schubert Elementary. Uh, y, y, algo, y algo chistoso es que dice que no sabe chiflar. All right, thank you. Um, next, uh, Ms. Tobias. Hi, my name is Mrs. Tobias, and I'm the teacher, the engineering teacher from Marvin Camera School. Um, I don't know if it's funny, but I'll do something about what I've been doing during uh, the coronavirus. Um, I learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube, a three by three Rubik's Cube. 
Um, and then next, I'm going to try to see if I can play electric. I'm going to start learning how to play guitar. We'll see. Um, me, buenas, buenas tardes. Me llamo Angelica Covia. Soy la maestra de Marvin Cameras. Este, y no es chistoso, algo chistoso, pero algo divertido es que aprendí a resolver un Rubik's Cube. Las esas, los esos, el cubo cuadrado con, con colores, el 3x3 y a ver si, si todavía sigue esta, este, uh, esto en la escuela, entonces van, voy a aprender a tocar este guitarra. Gracias. Thank you. Um, Ms. Carrillo. There we go. Um, hi, my name is Miss Lena Carrillo. Um, I am the special ed teacher at Belmont Cragen Early Childhood Center. Um, I am teaching in the blended classroom. Something funny about myself. Um, I don't know about something funny. I do like to dance with my kids a lot more now. Uh, I don't know about something funny. <laughs> Um, no, uh, that works. And sorry, I literally just threw that in. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, We're educators. We don't know how to have fun, Julio. <laughs> You're putting us on the spot. Right, but yet we expect our students to. <laughs> uh, you're, you're from um, Belmont Cregan, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, ella se llama um, Ms. Carrillo, es de la escuela Belmont Cregan Elementary. Y algo divertido dijo que está bailando más con sus con sus hijos. Thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mr. Gutierrez. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Mr. Gutierrez. I am the bilingual coordinator at Schubert Elementary. Uh, and something funny about me, um, I don't know. I'm constantly disinfecting all the door handles and um, the switches and all of like just like disinfecting everything at home right now. I'm a little paranoid, I guess. With the whole pandemic. Yeah, I'm the same. Um, so, uh, él se llama Mr. Gutierrez, es un maestro de la Schubert, es el coordinador de Bilingüe, y algo interesante de él es que está desinfectando todo en su casa um, todo el tiempo. Thank you. Um, any other um, teachers that I might have missed? If not, then I will I will then go over and introduce um, Ms. Bravo. Yes. Um, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Idriana. I don't know if you can see me right now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Idriana Bravo. Um, I am the parent mentor organizer for the Care Venture Program, and I'm also a parent for Belmont Cregan School. And one funny thing about me that. Mm, well, I don't know, it, hearing music, that will be considered as happy, but I love to hear music with my daughters. So, yeah, so, my, uh, mi nombre es Adriana Bravo, soy la, la organizadora del programa de Padres Mentores de, en Northwest High Housing Center. También un papá de Belmont Cregan Elementary School, de la Escuela Elementaria Belmont Cregan. Y algo divertido sería escuchar música, y es que se le Consider algo divertido con mis hijas. Thank you, Ms. Bravo. Uh, Ms. Cubillas. Hola a todos. Muy buenas tardes. Uh, soy Flor Cubillas. Soy la coordinadora del programa de Padres Mentores de la Escuela Marvin Camras. Y algo divertido que me gusta hacer uh, en caso contrario a Miss Dominici, a mí se me hace más fácil hacer las tortillas. Mucho más fácil que cualquier cosa. Ay, me divierto mucho haciendo tortillas y también pupusas. Uh, I love those. Um, <laughs> ella se llama, uh, mi, mi, um, I'm sorry, in English. Um, this is Miss uh, Miss Cubillas. She's from Camrys. Um, something interesting about her is that she loves making tortillas and also pupusas, which are very good. They're from uh, El Salvador. Thank you. Um, Miss, Miss Mercado. What? Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Marcela Mercado, soy la coordinadora de la Escuela Schubert. Uh, pues algo chistoso que me gusta hacer es bailar. Uh, en estos días me he puesto con mis niños, creo que ya hasta saben zapatear. Uh, entonces eso es no, algo... No, 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 no. 
Um, thank you. Um, sorry, I was putting someone uh, on mute. Uh, this is Ms. Mercado. She's from Schubert Elementary. She's a parent coordinator and something interesting is that she's been um, dancing a lot more with her kids. So thank you. Um, is there anyone else, another teacher that I might have missed in the introduction? Hi, um, my name is Miss Dunn and I'm a teacher at Belmont Cragen School. Um, I'm normally the art teacher uh, for the K through eight, uh, all the grades, but right now I'm helping out with the middle school English language arts. Okay, thank you, Miss Dunn. Uh, ella es Miss Dunn de la Escuela Belmont Cragen. Usualmente enseña arte, pero está ayudando con las clases de inglés en la escuela de sexto y de octavo. Um, thank you. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, vamos a comenzar y, and our first speaker will be um, Ms. Damanisi, who will talk about basics, about um, e-learning. Vamos a comenzar. La primera um, persona en el panel va a ser Ms. Damanisi, que va a hablar sobre aprendizaje básico. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do it in English if you want to just yeah. translate it so I'm not going back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, in general, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you, um, family members, staff, students. We know that this is a huge equity lift we've done for our community. Um, we know it has brought stress um, and it's hard, right? It's a big shift, something that we haven't done before. Um, but I'm really proud of the community on how we're getting together um, and helping close some of that equity gap that has existed. Like this really has shown, you know, that we really should focus on technology. We should be having this out there. Um, but we're um, in all this just excited that we're able to provide this to the community and the community in turn has been responding to us. Again, we know it's hard for each and every one of us. Um, because this is something we've never done before. Um, if we're thinking in terms of for cameras specifically, um, the technology that's needed, we know that, um, I'm going to speak a little bit about the applications. Um, we know that Google Meets and Google Classrooms are two Google-based applications um, that we're using here at Cameras. In order to get onto that, you do have to be using um, the student's email. We've reached out um, with the teachers. We provided the email. If you are unable to get on, please let the teacher know. Um, and if not, we're available in the office from nine to one. Um, we do ask that you're very patient if you're calling the office. Um, please know that it's only one administrator covering the office. Um, there's a security guard and then those helping out with either tech distribution or with, um, with the food services. Um, so be patient and knowing that as we walk through, like we will really um, take you step by step what to do. Um, the other thing for cameras is we are using school connects. If you haven't been able to get a sign on, let us know and we'll provide that for you as well. But thank you so much during this time. Okay, thank you. I'm going to translate that. So, más que nada, muchas gracias a todos. Está muy orgullosa del esfuerzo de los papás, de los maestros y todas los, las personas involucradas. Uh, esto es un tema de equidad, hablando de la falta de la necesidad de tecnología y, y ajustándose. Gracias a la comunidad por responder. En la escuela Cameras, las dos aplicaciones que se usan es el Google Meet y el Classroom, que ve el número dos. Y, la, y lo que se necesita es el correo electrónico del estudiante que cada estudiante tiene. También habla de que um, hay, hay personas disponibles de 9 a 1 que le pueden ayudar. Si no pueden acceder, deben hablar a la oficina y también utilizan el, el programa de School Connects. Y si no lo han um, iniciado, por favor, abren a la escuela o al maestro para que les ayude. Okay, on the next slide, Ms. Dominicia, I have um, some screenshots of the website if you wanted to go over them. No, absolutely. Um, so if you go to our regular website, it is uh, cameras.cps.edu. Um, what you'll see at the very top of it is the gray banner. You click on there. Um, I don't know if you took a screenshot of the next one. 
Ya, yeah. so, en esa página es para que se pueda acceder a la página de aprendizaje virtual. Um, and so what you'll notice is that it'll take you to the remote camera site. On top, what you'll, if you press cameras home, that'll take you back to our original page. Um, but you could see right there that we have the different grade levels. Um, exploratory is like the art, the music, um, the physical education. Um, support services is to be able to get in contact with our social worker, our counselor, um, and then more we have resources there for the parents. In addition, if you see the four little icons on the bottom, those are um, tutorials on how to use our uh, web-based applications. So you'll see um, Google Meets, Google Chat, Google Classroom, and School Connects. Um, the one other thing that I will say, I think parents at this point are very good. We've been making a lot of phone calls through our computers. Um, so they'll show up as, un, as restricted. Um, but please know that we're not doing the telemarketing. It is us um, trying to reach out to you. Okay, good to know. So en esa página está hablando de cada área arriba en la parte blanca. Y si usted presiona Cameras Home, le lo manda a la paja, página original. En la parte de servicios de apoyo, es diferentes recursos para la comunidad. Abajo están las aplicaciones y también dijo que están haciendo llamadas de, por teléfono, por la computadora. O sea, puede ser que le aparezca como número bloqueado. Uh, son ellos, por favor, contesten. Yo siempre digo que si no, que no quieren hablar con ellos, y yo siempre contesto. Y si no quiere hablar con la persona, nada más cuélgame, si es un número privado. Yeah. Lo otro, lo de abajo, solamente para que sepa, es uh, las direcciones, cómo usar esas aplicaciones. Ok. Um, and then uh, on this slide, Ms. Amenicia, I clicked on the 6th to 8th grade, and then um, I have this part. So you want to talk about that? Um, that's not the 6th through 8th grade one. That's well, a presentation. Is, well, so basically okay. I clicked yeah. on it and um, this is okay. for people to find out who their uh, teacher is. Yeah. So uh, in English. So if you go ahead and you click on one of them and let's say you go to sixth grade, um, you scroll down a little bit and you will see um, this table. In the table, you'll see the teacher's name, their email. Um, you'll see what times they're seeing the students as well as what time you could reach out to the teachers. And so the teachers have, they have all the links posted through Google Classroom. Um, our, at this point, most of the, uh, well, all our teachers are online, um, but again, if you have any issue, please feel free to reach out to us. Okay. And then if you scroll below, I don't know if you have a screenshot of that, um, below that they'll access the remote learning It'll say the digital, so if they're um, going through Google Classroom, you'll find out what the kids are learning about. Um, but if you have, if you don't have access to that, then there's a button that says non-digital resources, and that's the stuff that you could print. You can always come by cameras from nine to one to print it out. Um, third grade, second grade on, it is specific to cameras. The teachers are developing it. On um, pre-K and K, they're trying to communicate um, through online, but we do have resources for them as well. Okay, thank you. Um, aquí básicamente estaba enseñando la página cuando usted selecciona, en este ejemplo, usted sexto a, a octavo. Aquí en esa página se enseña el maestro, su correo electrónico, el horario que están disponibles y, la, el, y el tiempo de la clase. So thank you, Ms. Dominici. Um, next, we're going to have uh, Ms. Hernandez go over computer tutorials, kind of what to do if the, com if the computer is not working. Ahora va a hablar Ms. Hernandez sobre qué hacer si su computadora no funciona. I don't know if she's having technical difficulties. Um, um, but, Hernandez, yeah. you're, there you go. You're on mute. Sorry. 
<laughs> Miss uh, Miss Guzman, join me whenever you you can if I'm missing something. Sorry, I, I wasn't I was muted. Um, so I, I mentioned uh, before we passed out over 400 devices at Schubert, and some people um, are coming back saying the device is not working. Um, and sometimes um, it is some it's a simple fix and so we want you to try a few things before you come back and make a trip back to the school uh, one of them is to restart the computer um, you know completely shut it down and restart it and make sure it's charged um, that's something that that's you know crucial to the operations of any any device ipad or computer um, check the settings. So um, in, on an iPad, it would be the settings. In a Chromebook, it would be, you know, the controls. Um, make sure the camera is on and the volume is on in those settings. Uh, a lot of the times they are turned off um, at Schubert at least um, for security purposes inside of the, the school. Um, Mr. Mendez, do you mind if I uh, just interpret what you just said? No, go ahead. Ok. Um, una, en Schubert hemos pasado uh, más de 400 computadoras y iPads y ahora tenemos algunos padres que los están trayendo para atrás, pero hay algunas cosas que podemos hacer antes de que, de que creamos que, que la computadora no sirve. Una de esas cosas es muy simple, simplemente apagar completamente la computadora y luego volver a empezarla de nuevo. Y la segunda cosa que podemos hacer es revisar los ajustes de la computadora o el iPad. En veces uh, decimos que el micrófono no sirve o la cámara no sirve, pero simplemente están apagados en los, en los ajustes. Okay. Um, CPS devices, if you have a CPS device, there are security measures that will not allow you to go on certain applications, uh, no matter what you do, so don't try. En los dispositivos de CPS, las computadoras y las iPads uh, tienen ciertas seguridades que no permiten que bajen aplicaciones a estos dispositivos. Entonces, uh, simplemente uh, no es algo que podemos controlar. Si CPS las bloqueó, no se van a poder bajar. Different schools have different amounts of devices. So if your school does not have a device for every child or every child did not get a device, we're suggesting that students share devices at home. No todas las escuelas tuvieron suficientes dispositivos para darle a cada estudiante. Entonces, en ciertos hogares van a tener que compartir un solo dispositivo. And if you still need a device, please contact the school um, to see if that is still a possibility. Um, at Schubert, yes, it is, um, but each school has a unique circumstance. Si aún no han recibido un iPad o una computadora y lo necesitan, comuníquense con la escuela de sus hijos. Uh, si su hijo va a la escuela Schubert, todavía tenemos dispositivos, pero es, uh, asegúrense de, que, de comunicarse con la escuela para ver si tienen un dispositivo para usted. Um, CPS also offers parent um, help for troubleshooting. So, Julia, you have the number, correct, on the mm -hmm. slide? Yeah, it's um, on the left. 773-417-1060. And so please contact that number. From what I understand, it is available in English and in Spanish for assistance. CPS también ofrece ayuda uh, para las personas que necesiten ayuda con los dispositivos. El número está en la caja roja y tienen ayuda en inglés y en español. Están disponibles de lunes a viernes de siete y media a cuatro y media de la tarde. All right. Great, thank you, Ms. Hernandez uh, and Ms. Guzman. We're now gonna hear from Ms. Stewart. Hi, so thank you guys again so much for joining. I'm really proud of our community and I'm really excited about um, getting everybody on track, no matter what school you're attending. Uh, one of the things I think it's really important is that if you don't know how to reach uh, your child's school, um, how to access that information on the CPS website. So if you first log in to www.cps.edu, um, that's the first step in identifying uh, schools for the district. 
then you're going to uh, click on the tab that says schools and then go to school profiles type in the name of your school and it'll take you to your school's uh, home page that lists the school website information for that school as well as the school's phone number Great. Um, ella es Ms. Stewart. Dijo que está muy um, orgullosa de todos los papás, de toda la comunidad. Y dijo ella que primeramente, si uno no sabe cómo acceder a la página de la escuela, pueden ir a cps.edu. De ahí va la parte de escuelas, que es la segunda parte aquí. En tercero va los perfiles de las escuelas. Y, de, y al final, usted pone, puede poner el nombre de la escuela y le va a aparecer. Parents might say, well, I only have a smartphone, and so that's how I'm able to get in touch with the school. But if you take your smartphone, if you need a translation, just turn your smartphone, and it'll actually give you a tab where you can change the language to um, whatever language of need, whether it be Polish, Spanish, uh, Ukrainian. And there you can do the same process where you select the school, go to the school's profile, actually um, type in the name of your school and then get the school's contact information but that screen will then be in the native language so again just take your school and change the profile to the, the horizontal view and then you can change the language so sabe diciendo mrs stover de que de ahí si nada más tiene su, su teléfono sé que todos tienen uh, volteen lo de lado Y de ahí pueden seleccionar el lenguaje. Están varios lenguajes. Se puede poner en español. Y de ahí va a ver en la parte derecha la información de la escuela y cómo um, acceder a esa, esa página. We also want you to know that you can access your school's website on a smartphone as well. So if technology is an issue, you can always type that in. At Belmont Cragen, we do, um, like Ms. Dominici was sharing, we do have very limited staff that are working in the building during remote learning. And so we've created an actual um, virtual help desk phone number that you can contact where both of our school clerks are available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. to answer any concerns that parents have if they're not able to reach us at the regular school number. Uh, Mrs. Stewart dijo que ellos tienen su página y tienen teléfonos adicionales. Hay un teléfono acá abajo que es el 631-743-5317, donde se le va con los dos trabajadores que le pueden ayudar, además de la, de, de la línea disponible a cualquier persona. Y es de lunes a viernes de 8 a 3. So, the other thing that we did to help parents out during this time is that on our school webpage, we actually have a link for COVID-19 resources. So, it's kind of a, a one-stop shop. Uh, for the technology resources that parents may need to get uh, support in terms of meal distribution as Belmont Craig along with other schools deliver meals Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It also gives information about remote learning guidance and for families at home and that's provided in English and Spanish. Um, the other resources, so all of the webinars that we attend, uh, including this one uh, for the community, are also going to be linked to this particular document, this Padlet, uh, that anybody can access, whether it be a smartphone, you can access it on your tablet, um, just to keep up to date with what's happening and the resources that are there. Um, it has social emotional um, supports, whether it be uh, apps to meditate, um, information about resources from Lurie Children's Hospital, where they are providing uh, supports for our families in the community, regardless of what school your child attends, as well as activities to keep kids engaged at home um, across disciplines, including the arts. Thank you, Mrs. Stewart. So, en la página de Belmont Creek in Elementary está um, donde pueden añadir a, a, a una página de recursos específicamente al, al COVID-19, el coronavirus. En cada sección arriba te habla de qué tema hay, es recursos de tecnología, de bienestar y salud, consejos a los papás, recursos de la comunidad y lo que se llama social emotional learning. So cuando usted selecciona ahí le puede dar um, y está en varios lenguajes y, y, y son de varios lugares para que usted lo pueda tener a, a la mano. 
and I'll share the link to this Padlet that all um, residents can have access to. Um, y la directora va a poner la, el, la página para que uno pueda accederlo y tenerlo para sus registros, lo cual se va a estar disponible de, después de, de esta llamada. Um, on this slide, um, this was a photo of Schubert Elementary, just so for folks can familiarize themselves with it. Uh, aquí está la página web de la escuela de Schubert. Um, como pueden ver, al lado izquierdo les da las fechas de cuando son las juntas. On the left-hand side, it shows you when there's upcoming events. And, and Julio, just so, just so I want to specify the, ta the top banner, the remote learning um, tab, and then the next page, just some of the resources that are under that tab. We have family feedback form. So if you have anything that you want to share with us, please um, fill out the form. Um, we have all of the non-digital um, lessons that are posted there for the whole month, uh, and they're updated weekly. Uh, we also have the Schubert staff office hours. So everybody's office hours are listed and their emails. So, uh, and some of them have their Google numbers as well. So you could reach out any of your teachers, the counselor, um, myself, Ms. Guzman, um, if you need any assistance in anything. En la página de Schubert, uh, bajo, si le empujan a donde dice Remote Learning, van a ver que uh, adjuntamos todos los horarios de los maestros para que sepan cuándo están los maestros disponibles en el documento que dice Schubert Staff Office Hours. También están todos los, todas las tareas que los maestros han dejado para todos los grados. Y tenemos un formulario de comentarios si hay algo que nuestras familias les gustaría este, comunicar o algo que podemos hacer mejor, uh, nos pueden dejar saber uh, vía este formulario. Thank you, Ms. Guzman. Uh, great translation. Um, Mr. Stewart, this was, if you could mention briefly about CPS TV. Sure, we're really happy that the district has partnered with local television stations and media outlets to provide remote learning lessons at home via television. So now um, the major networks like Univision, uh, Channel 7.2, and other networks like WTTW are providing academic content for children across grade levels during the week. So if you don't have access to a computer and you're working with a packet, now you have the opportunity to access CPS TV. So if you go into the CPS website under the COVID-19 section, it'll actually uh, link you to the CPS TV website uh, where you can see what the schedules are. You can actually uh, set up a schedule to ensure that your youngster has having access to these rich resources at home. Thank you. Something I found very cool. So uh, in esta página tiene información se puede ver a las clases virtuales por la televisión. So aquí está la información, el día y qué hora. Uh, mañana voy a tratar de, uh, de ver este canal para que yo aprenda algo también. Uh, and lastly, Ms. Stewart, if you could talk about how, you know, what are some resources where people can relax. I found this to be a very great website. It is, and that's also something I shared on the Padlet of resources that are in the chat. Uh, under social and emotional learning. And so um, the Calm uh, app is actually providing a host of free resources in English and Spanish to help us deal with uh, the trauma that we're experiencing due to COVID-19. Um, there are uh, sleep stories on there because we hear families saying the kids are having a hard time sleeping. And so they have um, children's um, videos that they can listen to to help them relax in the evenings. They have um, songs that you can listen to to kind of calm yourself as a parent. Uh, there are some breathing activities that it'll take you through. So it really helps you um, practice mindfulness and self-care, uh, which is something that is very, very important during this particular time. And it's absolutely free um, if you download the app. I actually downloaded the app to my smartphone and it um, gives me reminders that I could you know, do things, tell, it reminds me to take a deep breath 
Um, and it has kind of soothing music and it'll have different, you know, scapes that you can look at, whether it be uh, being in the mountains or if I want to go in the rainforest. Um, okay. It actually uh, gives me some, some ways to bring balance and calm and it, it doesn't cost any money. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Stuber va a compartir esta página, pero es algo para que uno pueda acceder, recursos gratis. Uh, son sonidos y música, o so si no puede dormir, por ejemplo, aquí tiene una, uh, algo para que le ayude y es completamente gratis. All right, great. Um, now we're going to hear from um, the teachers who have been patiently waiting, who are going to share with us a little bit about what they're seeing in the classroom and um, just any tips that they have for the parents in order for their students to have a successful education. So if we could start with um, the teachers from Schubert. Hi. So yeah, I, I've noticed like initially, like it was quite challenging helping students uh, get connected. But once the students learn how to log in to Google Hangout, um, it becomes a routine and students um, become independent learners. Um, en español, inicialmente fue bastante difícil ayudar a los estudiantes a conectarse, pero una vez que los estudiantes pues, um, aprendieron a conectarse en Google Hangout, se convierte en, se convierte en una rutina y los estudiantes uh, se convierten en aprendices uh, independientes. Great, thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. And just attendance-wise, um, any tips for our, our parents? I know that you can view it afterwards, but... Uh, right, well, I, I'm actually the, the, the bilingual coordinator at school, and um, what I've been doing because I'm, um, you know, the teacher's the one who's doing the Google Hangout, um, but I've been calling parents up. So I, like, if I see, like, there's students who are not attending the, uh, the Google, Hangout, Google Hangout, I personally call parents and let them know, you know, like, um, it's, it, it's right now, like, it's math class or it's science or whatnot, um, just to inform parents. And sometimes I have to, like, guide them through because um, it's not that students don't want to connect, but sometimes they just don't know how, you know? Okay. Great, thank you. So le pregunté a, a Mr. Gutierrez si me estaba mencionando de que él se encarga de um, ayudar a darle apoyo a la escuela. O so cuando, si digamos que yo sea el estudiante y me quedé dormido, él le habla a mi, a mi mamá y le, y le dice, hey, ¿qué pasó? Ahorita hay clase, se debe de levantar Julio y, y, y ir a su clase de inglés. Thank you. Anything else you wanted to add, Mr. Gutierrez? I think it's it's just all new to us, to, to everyone, obviously, and just being patient. I mean, obviously, like, we need to be patient with these parents, and obviously, everyone's going through different things, and, um, you know, just working together. Okay. Thank you. La última palabra del señor Gutierrez fue que, um, que e ellos entienden y tienen paciencia para los papás y le piden lo mismo a, los, a las escuelas y que todos estamos trabajando juntos. Thank you. Um, Ms. Tobias? Hi, sorry, I was clicking on the wrong unmute button. <laughs> um, so what we've been saying, I teach, uh, I co-teach one of the eighth grade uh, science classes and one of the things in the upper grades that we have been seeing is that um, students are, um, are logging in, but there's not a whole lot of engagement right there. Um, so we need to, uh, we're trying to create different ways to make sure that they're engaged uh, with the discussion and the assignment. Um, so we're working on that. In the lower grades, there's more engagement, but in the upper grades, we're, we're having a hard time with the engagement. We've distributed like 350 pieces of technology. So, um, so that's not an issue, but the upper grades, they are logging in, but we need more of that interaction. So mm -hmm. that way we know as a teacher, you know, we're, we're uh, facilitating the information and the learning, but we need that two-way communication to understand, to make sure that they, that we know that they're learning or where they're having problems with. Um, so, um, y como en nosotros, este, yo, yo ayudo en la clase de octavo de ciencia y este, lo que hemos visto que este, 
están asistiendo las, en la, la clase los estudiantes, pero no hay este, mucha discusión. Este, entonces, um, está difícil de, de ver como, como maestro o maestra si están aprendiendo o están, este, saben lo que estamos, este, le estamos enseñando. Entonces, este, lo que necesitamos es que, este, um, ayude, que nos ayuden para para las discusiones, porque está difícil de ver dónde están los niños. Um, en los, los grados este, más de pre a como a quinto es mejor, pero los grados más altos está, está más difícil. Uh, pas, viste, nosotros pasamos como más, como 350 este, dispositivos electrónicos, entonces eso no es problema. Están asistiendo las clases, pero necesitamos más este, discusión. Con los, con los estudiantes. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Baez. Um, next, we're going to hear from Belmont Craig, and we'll start with Ms. Carrillo. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I am a preschool special ed teacher at Belmont Craig Early Childhood Center. I am one of the teachers, so I am co teaching. Um, this experience from the beginning, I just first want to say kudos to all the parents out there that are supporting us, supporting their children. We could not do what we are doing without you. Um, so I want you to give yourself a round of applause, a pat on the back, a deep breath in, because you are making my job and I know a lot of other teachers' jobs a lot easier um, during this crazy time that we all are in. So thank you for that. Um, in the preschool classroom, it's a little bit difficult, well, it was difficult in the beginning to get everybody connected. So it was getting email set up. Honestly, I didn't even know that preschoolers had an email address. So that was something, and I've been in the system for 16 years. So <laughs> that was something very new to us. So setting up the kids' email addresses, then teaching the parents that their children had email addresses. Um, so that was step number one. However, that step was easy easier because we have had class dojo set up since the beginning of the school year. If we had not had class dojo set up in September, I think this journey would have had more bumps and roads and potholes like Chicago, right? Um, but luckily we did have it set up and we've always been able to have that open line of communication with our parents. So um, again, it's made it very easy to keep that open line of communication because it started off with class dojo back in September. As we transition to this remote learning, um, we kept just posting like we did. We, we tried, to, tried to keep as much consistency as possible for our families, for our students. So we were posting on a daily basis, something we always say is good morning, happy Monday, or whatever day of the week it is. And for some reason, just that simple little sentence brings light into their eyes. Um, so moving forward from there, we started introducing the portfolio concept that is on Class Dojo. And I personally love the portfolio section in Class Dojo because there's four different ways that my students can submit work. They can draw it, they can take a picture of their work, um, they can do a video, and um, there's one, video, pictures, drawing and then audio. And I personally love the video component because that gives me an idea of not only the work that the student is doing, but also their comprehension behind that work. Um, and again, you just get to, even though I can't be in the same room as, as them, it just lights up my day just to see them working so hard and having fun with it. Um, with Class Dojo, what else are we doing? Sorry, I have all my notes. Um, we're also using Google Classroom. So we're now that we may or may not, whatever may be happening in the fall, we wanna be proactive with Google Classroom. So we're going to actually hold one of our very first parent meetings tomorrow for our classroom to teach them more about step-by-step -step of how to access Google Classroom um, and how they can also complete their assignments there if they aren't comfortable with Dojo or vice versa. Um, we do meet virtually with our preschool classroom. So we do have an AM and PM session. So twice a day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I get to see my kids and I love it. We sing, we dance, we count, we read stories. Um, we do the weather of the day. You can see behind me, I have my visuals and everything. And, um, and again, it's the parents. These kids, some of my students are getting on by themselves, but 
the parents, I can see them sitting next to their child. I see them redirecting them. I see them, if the child didn't hear me, I hear the parent um, rephrasing what I said or asking their child at home. And again, there's actually big brothers and sisters doing this too. So mm -hmm. with the big brothers and sisters, I didn't really realize how many big brothers and sisters were stepping up and helping out because the parents are working. Um, I had a one-on-one -on -one today with a parent, with, no, with a big brother, and we had to go step-by-step -step in how to get his younger brother connected. So that was really cool to see. But um, I think the, the thing that kind of makes this easier is that we can do this virtual eye to eye kind of thing, right? So if I can share my screen and I can walk people through it, um, we've also gone steps further where we have taken snapshots as if we were pretending to be a student on a computer, what would this look like? If we were using a cell phone, what would this look like? If we were using an iPad, what would this look like? So as teachers, we've really had to learn how to step outside of our comfort zone, outside of our box and say, okay, if I was a student, if I was a parent, what am I looking at? Um, and some, again, what made it easier for me is that I have two daughters. And so I just kind of navigate as them and I was able to take that snapshot. Um, another connection is that we are calling our families once a week, um, checking in and seeing how they are doing because that is most important to me. Self-care is so important to me. If we can't take care of ourselves as grown-ups, how are we gonna expect ourselves to take care of our, our, our children and our students as well? We have to be 100%. Um, I also, I, I'm okay with it. I let my families have my phone number. Um, it, it is a traumatic time for a lot of our families and for ourselves that I have my phone next to me. I know it's not ideal for everybody, but I just try to put myself into other people's shoes. How would I feel if I was in this situation? What kind of response would I want? So I just wanna make sure that I am available as much as possible. Um, and then finally, um, Again, because I'm special, ed, it's kind of, it's a difficult time to kind of be working with our students, but um, when I can, I try to meet one-on-one -on -one with them and their parents. We're playing games just so I can get a better idea of where my students are um, with their language, with their comprehension, with their independent functioning skills. So all in all, I can say that our team at Belmont Cragen has done an amazing job keeping contact with our families, trying to navigate. We've become IT people ourselves. Um, but at the end of the day, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to breathe. We have to meditate. And my greatest metaphor that I love to use is the example of the airplane. If that plane's going down and those oxygen masks drop, the first thing they tell us to do is to put it on ourselves. Because if we pass out, who's going to take care of our, our child? So I just take care of yourself and keep up the good work. And parents and big brothers and sisters that are helping one another out there, kudos. Give yourself that pat on the back and just breathe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Ms. Carrillo. And I've learned so much throughout this process myself. I'm going to summarize that briefly. <laughs> um, la, la maestra de preescolar um, en Bama Cragen. Uh, ella empezó dándole las gracias a los papás. Dijo que más que nada lo que hace falta es que uno sepa los correos electrónicos de los estudiantes. Y, y de ahí ellos dijeron que están dando mensajes constantemente. Se puede subir a uh, las tareas a través de Class Dojo de cuatro maneras. Y dijo ella que le gusta mucho cuando es de, cuando lo mandan por video. Uh, dice que hay un sketch cuando se tocan, uh, cuando cuando hay clase para sus estudiantes y también dice que aprecia cuando los papás están ahí juntos a sus, sus hijos y también ve que los hermanos y hermanas están ayudando bastante y dijo ella que una vez a la semana le hablan, le hablan a los papás y dice que es importante que uno se cuide a sí mismo y dio el ejemplo si uno está en un avión y si algo pasa debe ponerse la máscara uno mismo primero para que puedan ayudar a los demás. Um, thank you. So then we'll, lastly, we'll hear from the art teacher, um, Ms. Dunn. Hi. Yes, I'm Ms. Dunn at Belmont Cragen. And um, so I just want to thank everybody for taking part in this today. It's really great. Um, and also the parents, you guys are the other half of the equation, and we really appreciate all the work that you do at home to ensure that the students are staying engaged. Um, I have 
not been directly teaching art so much as I've been working with the teachers to combine their curriculum with art. Um, although next week I am going to do an online art activity with the kindergartners. Um, so what I've done is I've set up on our um, Belmont Cragen in our in Google classrooms, I have an art, we have an art, music and drama classroom actually. And in there I have a lot of activities and I've invited all the students in the school, um, K through eight, to have access to that. And they can go in there anytime to do an art activity. Um, and so um, I'm constantly adding things to that. And I've also um, started to create uh, Belmont Cragen Art Club so kids can join if they want and we're still kind of getting that together and trying to figure out what our art activities will be depending on what the kids want to do but my focus has been mainly uh, to ensure that the students do not fall behind in um, the main academics of reading uh, writing and you know math and science so I've been working with the middle school English and language arts teachers um for the sixth seventh and eighth graders and we've so i've been kind of a support in those google meets every day um but i we also have been com combining um what they're studying with art activities and it's been working really great um it's just a really great combination and we're learning all kinds of new technologies um the kids are making podcasts they're making videos um in combination with their poetry and with their um, social science studies. The other thing I want to say is some of the things that are really positive that are going on are also some of the things that are really kind of negative. For instance, um, the technology, the kids have been really learning a lot about technology, but technology is hard to learn. So it's taking time and uh, additional time out of class time in order to for them to learn the technology and to feel comfortable with it. Um, the other thing is the middle schoolers especially are learning time management to be on time to their Google Meets. Um, self, they're learning agency um, to take care of um, the deadlines on their own. In a lot of ways, they're behaving like the expectations of high school and college kids. Um, executive functioning to be more organized um, and accountability. So these are all really positive things. Um, also behavior management, um, but at the same time, some of the issues are kids sticking with their sleep schedules. Um, some of the kids are staying up way too late at night and then they're not able to meet with their classes in the morning, their Google Meet sessions. So they'll maybe join in in the afternoon um but they'll miss the morning one so this is a big issue and we really need parents support with this to make sure that the kids especially the middle schoolers are not staying up late um the other thing is um yeah i guess that's about it oh special kids with special needs so we have a support system that we have been just intuitively using, which is the special needs teachers have set up Google classrooms um, sort of along with the main classroom. So any student that needs support, whether it's special needs or not, can log into those other classrooms to get more one-on-one -on -one or three-on-one -on -one support. So that's really worked well as, as well, so. All right, great. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dunn. Uh, makes welcome. me want to go back to school. I wish I had all this when I was a kid. <laughs> Um, so, ella es la maestra de arte, ella está ayudando a apoyar a los maestros para incorporar temas de arte. Um, dijo ella que hay varias actividades de música, de arte, de dibujar. Um, está ayudando a todos los maestros. Dijo ella que hay un club de arte y lo que ella dice que hay que hacer es, um, es darles consejos a los, a los hijos que, que se mantengan en un sketch de, de, de dormir. Porque a veces se eh, quedan despiertos muy tarde y ya de ahí pues están muy cansados. All right. Well, thanks again, Mrs. Dunn. Uh, we're going to wrap up and hear from our parents. So we'll have Ms. Cubillas go first and just share. She'll be sh sharing in Spanish and Ms. Bravo will translate. Um, Flor? 
Hola, buenas tardes. Eh, como ya mencionamos, soy Flor Cubías. Yo soy la coordinadora del programa de Padres Mentores de Marvin Camras. Uh, yo tengo la oportunidad de conocer y trabajar con muchos padres de familia, de la comunidad y de la escuela. Y he podido percibir el sentir y las preocupaciones de un buen número de padres con estos cambios que todos estamos experimentando en el aprendizaje de nuestros estudiantes. Y ha sido difícil y lo sigue siendo para todos en general, desde los principales maestros, padres de familia y principalmente uh, con los estudiantes, ya que su educación ha tomado un giro sin precedentes que a todos nos preocupa. Uh, por lo que yo quiero mencionar, algunas de muchas dificultades que se han experimentado uh, desde el punto de vista de padres. Uh, y este, para que podamos uh, entender mejor y poder este, buscar algunas soluciones. Uh, la primera dificultad que se, se presentó más al principio de todo esto y creo que todavía sigue sucediendo es el acceso a internet. Uh, muchas familias uh, no tenían acceso a Wi-Fi y algunas no lo siguen teniendo. Entonces, por esa razón, uh, algunas no, no tomaron los equipos que las escuelas prestaban Uh, porque de, de qué forma los iban a conectar, ¿verdad? Aunque tenemos el servicio de, de internet de Comcast, el internet esencial, uh, es muy accesible, la verdad, pero en esos días fue muy difícil obtener uh, respuestas inmediatas, ya que uh, ellos presentaron un nivel alto de solicitudes. En mi experiencia, yo compartí mucha información acerca de eso a algunas familias, Uh, traté de ayudarlas a conectarlas, a, a, a llenar aplicaciones y todo, pero la verdad fue difícil. Uh, en particular con una familia, uh, estuve tratando de llamar y la, el tiempo de espera de la llamada fue aproximadamente una hora 40 minutos. Entonces fue como muy difícil, la verdad, para las familias y, y son uno de los, de los retos que hemos enfrentado. Uh, pero yo les aliento a de que las familias que no tengan aún acceso a internet puedan a, tratar de obtenerlo por, por este medio. Uh, eh, tenemos este, uh, el link que es al www.internetesencial.com o llamar al número de teléfono 1-855-765-6995. Otra de las dificultades que pude observar uh, fue uh, con los correos electrónicos y contraseñas que los maestros proporcionaron a los padres uh, de cada estudiante. Este, muchas familias uh, no pudieron hacer cambios de contraseñas porque se requería hacer eso para poder tener como más personalizado el correo y no lo hicieron. Entonces, este, después no sabían cómo entrar. Entonces, yo siempre he recomendado cuando tengamos esas preocupaciones, acudir a los maestros que ellos nos, nos brindarán este ayuda. También otras dificultades que las familias están presentando es que uh, con los teléfonos o dispositivos que tengan en casa, que muchas veces no son compatibles con los programas que se están utilizando para uh, la comunicación o para las clases. Eh, algunos porque tal vez están sus memorias saturadas, uh, no pueden este, obtener las aplicaciones o, o no, los, no los tienen actualizados. Eh, y otra razón también que he escuchado mucho es que a muchos padres se les dificulta el uso de la tecnología. Eh, aunque en este caso uh, los, las familias que tienen estudiantes en niveles más altos, pueden este, los niños mismos pueden acceder a, a sus clases, a sus aplicaciones y todo eso. Pero, pero son retos que como padres todos estamos enfrentando. Pero por último, yo quiero recalcar la importancia de una buena comunicación entre los padres de familia y los maestros. Cuando no sepamos uh -huh. eh, o no entendamos algún paso a seguir, uh, yo os recomiendo acudir a los maestros de cada hijo para obtener mejores respuestas. Eh, sabemos que hay muchas opciones, como las mencionaron antes, de comunicación, el ClassDojo, School Connect, que 
todas las escuelas están actualizando información ahí y yo uh, como madre de familia también incentivo a otros padres a que visiten estas aplicaciones si todavía no las están usando, que, que empiecen a hacerlo para que puedan tener este, la, la comunicación que se necesita entre sus maestros también. Uh, y y es, es todo, hay mucho que decir, es mucha información, la verdad, pero mi, mi otra compañera les va a hablar de un poquito más de dificultades. Uh, gracias. All right. Uh, thank you, Flor. Um, Ms. Bravo will translate at the end. Uh, Ms. Mercado from uh, Schubert will speak next. Um, Maricela? Gracias, Julio. Buenas tardes. Uh, buenas tardes a todos. Bueno, pues, uh, mi nombre es Maricela Mercado y soy de la Schubert. Principalmente soy papá de la Schubert. Uh, yo voy a hablar por papás. Yo ayer me puse a hacer un resumen con llamadas de cosas que están pasando en estos momentos este, los papás, ¿verdad? Uh, algunos de los puntos más importantes que yo vi que necesitaban eran las computadoras y las tablets que no funcionaban. Gracias, mis Hernández. Gracias, mis Guzmán. Ya nos sacaron de esa duda que nosotros podemos compartir, ¿verdad? Uh, una segunda opción que nos, puede, nos están pidiendo los papás también es si los maestros pudiesen ayudar en estos momentos a grabar las clases, a especificar cómo hacer una tarea. Como todos los maestros saben, es nuevo para nosotros. Nosotros como papás, como mamás, nunca hemos usado una computadora. Entonces se nos hace bastante difícil poder usar una computadora con programas que jamás hemos visto. Y queremos pues apoyar a nuestros hijos, pero si ustedes nos muestran las herramientas, y decirnos en un video cómo hacer o paso a paso de cómo este, uh, pues ayudar a nuestros hijos. Uh, también quisiéramos pedir uh, links directos, porque como saben, algunos pues se traban. En algunas computadoras no sirven, eh, no entran directamente a las clases, ¿verdad? Uh, otro puede ser los padres en estos momentos que están bastante estresados. Como pues todos ustedes saben, no solamente tienen un niño, sino tienen dos o más niños. Entonces ellos están bastante estresados y nosotros también, porque no nada más en una escuela, sino fueron varias las que yo llamé a los padres, ¿verdad? Ellos dicen que como no tienen solamente un niño, sino más, eh, las tareas se les está haciendo bastante pesado, porque no pueden ayudar a un niño y dejar al otro descuidado. Entonces, también los horarios de clase están chocando. Están dos o tres de sus niños conectados al mismo tiempo y sin la suficiente uh, ayuda, como computadoras u otros en el teléfono. Y los papás no se dan abasto en ese aspecto. Y lo más importante, creo yo, fue un comentario que algunas mamás me hicieron y eso sí es... Maricela, no te escuchamos. Sí, se apagó. Y lo, lo okay. principal este, fue la, algo que me comentaron unos de los, este, ¿cómo se llama? de los papás. Fue los principales, ¿qué tácticas tienen para que los padres puedan involucrarse en los estudios de sus hijos? ¿Y cómo pudiesen ellos ayudarlos? Porque como saben, muchos de los niños no se están conectando en estos momentos a las clases. Y ellos están este, como de vacaciones. Porque dicen que no les afectará en estos momentos sus grados que ya tienen. Ellos ya están como salvados sus grados. Y ellos están creídos que ya es de vacaciones, que ya no les va a afectar. Entonces, me gustaría buscar o que ustedes buscaran una táctica para que pudieran decirle a los padres que esto es mentira, que sí les afectará en un futuro a sus hijos y que no estamos de vacaciones. Y pues nada, solamente me gustaría pues dar las gracias a todos los principales porque ustedes han sido una gran ayuda para todas nuestras este, mamás, nuestros papás y todas las escuelas que tenemos aquí en nuestra área. Muchas gracias a todos los principales, a los maestros y a todo el personal. Gracias. 
Thank you, Ms. Mercado. We'll now hear from Mr. Bravo, who will summarize both Ms. Cubillas and Ms. Mercado's remarks. Uh, thank you, Julio. And just really uh, quick going back to very important points that uh, parents are struggling with. And uh, like Ms. Cubias from Marvin Cameron was saying and Ms. Mercado from Schubert was saying is, the first one is, it will be technology. Um, uh, parents are really struggling with uh, their device, either computer or tablet, not being compatible with CPS application. Uh, not really having access to internet or just a new parent with technology. So, uh, oh, and also having direct links to their programs. Uh, second, it will be online classes. Uh, parents think that if teachers can record their um, students' work, it will be easier for them to help them and understanding what they're doing and their needs. And also if there's any students that, you know, they're late for their classes, they can just go back so they can understand a little bit more about what's going on and not just be in uh, their classes, uh, half, uh, half of their class. Third, it will be a student's account. Uh, parents really are struggling with uh, emails, the students' emails, how to log in, passwords, uh, how to log into Google Meet, Google Classroom, and it has been very difficult for them to understand this, um, of course, this uh, new uh, uh, process. I think it's new for everyone. It's just uh, one of the main things that parents are really struggling that they don't know how to navigate throughout those um, programs. Uh, number four, like Ms. Mercado was saying, uh, parents are really stressed out. I mean, I think everybody is. Uh, just for the fact that, you know, there, there is only one device for, for a fa uh, household, um, uh, many homework, and just, you know, uh, really struggling with the same schedule. It has been very difficult, especially if a family has more than one children. It makes it very difficult to have them con uh, doing their homework or being uh, connected. Fifth, it will be... Um, uh, it will be parents think that it will be a good idea. Parents uh, with teachers meet one, once or twice a month to see how their uh, their uh, students or children's uh, work is doing and how can they help them in different areas. Uh, last, it will be how can we um, engage parents? Uh, like Ms. McCall was saying, I think we hear that a lot when parents think that the school year is over that grades uh, for this school year doesn't really matter, but it really does. And it's very sad to hear that, that parents think that's the situation, that you know, it's, there's no need to have their children uh, connected or in class. Uh, and it will be a good idea to work together on a strategy that we can really involve parents to make them understand that this is, we're not on vacations or anything that we have to, uh, you know, really understand that our kids need to be uh, in, cl in um, remote classes. And I don't know, we can, you know, like I said, we can work together to find uh, new strategies to help really parents to make understand that um, that really, really is going to help their um, kids. So, um, Finally, it will be just a thank you from Ms. Uh, Mercado and Ms. Cubias uh, to teachers, uh, staff, and principals for all your help and for all your support. And as a community, we can work together to help all the parents that we can to stay, stay um, and work together. Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Bravo. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, again, impressed by your translation. I feel like um, hey, you did a much better job than I did. Um, so thank you no. again to everyone. Um, thank you to the teachers, to the principals. Um, if you can, please put your phone on silent. Um, if folks, thank you for folks. Ahora de ver noticias que son negativas te ponen más enfermos. Um, and so now we're going to go through questions and answers. Uh, a, a mucho, 
Uh, gracias por quedarse aquí con nosotros. Gracias a los maestros, los papás y las directoras por, por um, ayudar a realizar hoy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with uh, questions and answers. If folks have any, if you are on mute, press star six. So, um, uh, if folks want to start with questions, please go ahead. Si quieren comenzar con preguntas, vamos a, vamos a hacer como unos 10 minutos de preguntas. Can I can I just say one thing before yes. you start? Um, I just want to point out that the middle schoolers uh, at Belmont Cragen, for example, they while they were in school uh, before the pandemic, they were on a lot of the platforms, the applications already. For instance, Summit Learning, um, Google they, Drive. They were already saving their documents and creating Google Slides. So a lot of this for them, I'd say like even grades four, but definitely grades five through eight, this is nothing new for them. The only thing that may be challenging is, and I don't think it really is a challenge for many of them anymore. We, for instance, for our, um, sixth grade English language arts, we have all but almost three kids attending um, and doing the work. But for instance, we use Summit um, and they're already using that. They know how to get into that. So I think I think, you know, for us, it's not so much the middle grades with the platforms. Um, I just want to point that out. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And um, Mrs. Dunn estaba diciendo de que los estudiantes de grados de como de cuarto a séptimo ya estaban usando estas aplicaciones. So ella estaba diciendo que piensa que son más que nada para los estudiantes más chiquitos. Um, don't all rush to ask questions at once. No, just um, <laughs> por favor, tomen esta oportunidad para hacer preguntas. Aquí tenemos maestros, directores, um, papás. Uh, I know I'll tell you something. I'm learning so much before I have a kid. I'm going to try to be a great dad. <laughs> but yes, Mr. Mr. Anaya, did you have a question? Yes, I mean, I just wanted to know who's going to go first. I see all these names on the screen and, you know, whoever's on you phone, are. I don't want to, you know, just, you are. like you said, jump in the way. But um, I could try to do both. I could try to do my own translation, if that's okay, okay with y'all. Puedo hacer mi propia traducción. Gracias a Dios, soy bilingüe. Muy rápido, gracias. Este, la mamá, maestra, señora Mercado. Bueno, todos en general, a uh, Juntos podemos tratar de hacer un cambio este, tecnológico avanzado. Um, me gustó todo lo que, 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 que dijo la mamá porque se acercó al pueblo, se acercó a la gente, hizo llamadas, todo lo que de, del lado de nosotros, porque vemos del lado de CPS, vemos del lado de, 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 del sistema educativo, este, y pues se, se parece fácil, o sea, se ve muy fácil, um, pero en realidad es difícil. Um, real quick, thank you guys, thank you, um, all, everybody, all these uh, great schools that we have around. I miss Northwest, I don't know how do I, you know, get in, in touch with them, but, um, you know, it's, it's, we got to hear the parents, the people, we got to make the calls, we got to see what's going on. Um, I do agree with both sides the education system with uh, uh, the eighth graders you know that you know they should know they have this devices in school so they should know how to log in and all that um, but then again we're in we're at home I have uh, six kids in the CPS system so it's pretty hard this is actually my eighth grade uh, kids classroom or you know the pantry room all the way in the back Um, and, you know, bedrooms, closets, whatever we can, like you guys said, at the same time, um, en español para los que no me entendieron, ay, disculpen si estoy tomando todo el tiempo, este, pero es difícil tener varios niños en la misma casa, tratar de aprender, tratar de, de ver qué es lo que quieren los maestros de nuestros hijos y de nosotros, este, soy un padre de ocho, este, me tengo que levantar temprano para darle de comer a estos niños y tratar de estar con el sistema. O sea, soy un, un caso especial, se puede decir, 
I'm an old school person. I have eight kids at home, so it's pretty hard for me to try to keep up with all this, but I'm going to do my best. Um, I'm a millennial, so we can make it happen. Thank you, Mr. Anaya, and you were one of the first parents on today, so I appreciate that. Él fue uno de los primeros papás que llegó hoy. So, gracias por sus palabras. Julio, buenas tardes. Soy Mercedes. Hola. Hola, Julio. Mira, yo solo quiero comentar algo que he notado. Con mi hija no, no tengo mayores dificultades. Ella tiene un horario para levantarse y hacer su rutina de estudio. Y pues va cumpliendo con sus tareas el, bien, ¿verdad? Porque es, pues así se le ha enseñado en casa, ¿verdad? A ser responsable y a cumplir con ese deber que tiene. Pero he notado eh, el impacto que tuvo eh, lo que decían las compañeras del, que son parent mentor, que el, el, la idea que se tiene que... Si cumple o no con sus tareas, no va a afectar en sus grados. Eso lo, creo que, bueno, mi hija está en octavo grado y sus compañeros creo que lo han interpretado como que no importa participar o no en clases. De hecho, hoy en la mañana ella me, así, me comentaba que en la clase de sociales solo habían nueve niños participando en la clase, lo cual a mí me sorprendió, ¿verdad? Porque... Yo sé que en su salón son más de veintitantos, ¿verdad? Entonces, sí es preocupante, no sé, como que en el paso de los días, no sé si los chicos se han ido desmotivando o qué ha pasado, pues, o esta interpretación equivocada que se hizo de ese mensaje que incluso CPS lo transmitió en, en, en los emails que nos envía, ¿verdad? De que no se iban a afectar los grados y de que los niños iban a salir bien pero claro, cada quien tiene su nivel de exigencia yo con mi hija no tengo ningún problema pero sí este, por ejemplo he visto en el cambio de una materia u otra que a veces sí he dicho yo pues le hago ver que todas son importantes, que en todas va a aprender ¿verdad? y, y le gusta, pero sí quería transmitirles eso y que sí me, me ha llamado la atención Cómo los muchachos o los chicos de octavo grado eh, eh, específicamente de, de, han ido desmotivándose con el paso del tiempo y han interpretado mal esto de que el trabajo que están haciendo de manera eh, en línea, virtual, por internet, no va a afectar sus grados. Es como que ah, no, ya no importa, igual voy a pasarlo, ¿verdad? Que en vez de aprovechar para obtener mejores grados, se han desmotivado y es natural, pues natural por todo el cambio que ha representado el estar trabajando en línea con todo el estrés que llevamos en casa, tanto ellos con un nuevo aprendizaje como pues papás y mamás también en situaciones que no se esperaban. Entonces solo quería compartir esto porque igual decía, ¿qué estrategia tienen los principales o las, o las maestras para, para enfrentar esto? pues no sé, cada maestro se las está ingeniando porque yo veo que tienen muy buenos recursos. Los maestros de mi hija, y hoy miraba al maestro, a mi sarnieto específicamente, que es el maestro de matemáticas, una clase muy animada, que hasta yo, hasta mi esposo y yo escuchábamos como comparte cosas este, graciosas para animar a los muchachos, pues, ¿verdad? Y, y es bonito ver eso y yo pues les agradezco, lo felicito al equipo, ¿verdad? Porque se esmeran. Eh, entonces, para no ocupar mucho tiempo, sé que hay muchas inquietudes, agradecerles a los, al staff de, de Northwest Middle School por su esfuerzo, ¿verdad? Pero sí me preocupa esto, ya que es un aprendizaje diferente, ¿verdad? El presencial en el presencial, los, los muchachos les cuesta y aún así pues este, van poco a poco, ahora se presenta un gran reto de vera para ellos. Solamente, gracias Julio. Sí, gracias uh, señorita Aguirre. So, Miss Aguirre is a parent at one of the local schools and she was saying that um, one of the challenges that her um, child is facing is that, um, from, she's from Northwest Middle, um, she was saying that with the policy of uh, fourth quarter not affecting the students that it's 
uh, unmotivating other students. And I know that was a CPS Board of Education decision, but what um, comments or guidance would both teachers and principals have to continue to keep students' morale and um, just overall commitment towards school? Um, well, Julio, you know, I could chime in on that. The fourth quarter does affect students. Um, it affects their, you know, their, well, first of all, their learning, right? That's number one, which is something that, that's going to affect them for the upcoming future. But if students are not engaging and teachers have contact with them and they're just refusing to engage and there's no other hardships, right? There's no medical issues, nobody's sick. Um, it can affect the student's grades. So um, we want to make sure that, you know, we are being um, very diligent and very um, responsive in our grading but there, there can't, you know, there can be consequences as far as like having to attend virtual summer school if it needed to come to that. I mean, we don't want to threaten that all the time, but yes, there are, you know, there are consequences and the, their, their grades for fourth quarter absolutely count. That's what we're telling our kids, our families, and our students. Thank you, um, Ms. Hernandez. Can I chime in on that as well? Yes. Yeah, so um, that's something I think as a community, we have to kind of um, come together on. Um, I don't care what the, the media is saying. We know that our kids cannot afford to lose out on a day of instruction. We know that the impact that that's gonna have, um, if they're in middle school, that's gonna affect them for high school. So right now, Tell your middle schoolers everything they're doing now is going to set them up for success when they go to our high school. Yo no le he movido. You know, and so really thinking about that. And then how can we, you know, uh, make sure they have the right environment, making sure they're going to sleep on time, that they're ready for class on time, and then celebrating with their teacher that they've done a, a good job. We tend to focus on what our kids are not doing but we don't put as much emphasis on what they are doing. So as a parent, you know, I know with three kids, if they get nothing else from me, it's not monetary, it's just me acknowledging their hard work, that I'm proud of them, that I love them. And if it gets hard, we'll work together. We'll work with the teacher, we'll work with the school. And if they hear that as a mom that I'm supporting it, then they'll continue to try. But Right now, uh, we have to continue to encourage our children, to motivate them, to let them know that this is the one thing that will change their lives forever, is having a good education. And that is something that other communities are investing lots of money on. They're making sure their kids have tutoring. And then in our community, we're telling our kids that um, fourth quarter may not count. And so we can't um, message that as a community, as a school. We believe that every moment counts. Cada momento cuenta. You know, echale ganas. Like, push it. Give it your all, even if it's hard. So, again, just, you know, work with your child. Encourage your child. Um, work with the school. Like, to reach out to the teacher and say, you know, I'm having problems getting my child to, to work or to be motivated and see what you guys could work on as a strategy because this school and this work that we're doing, it's not work, it's a partnership. And it's because we love each of the kids that we work with every day. So um, Northwest Middle is here to support, you know, their families, reach out to Principal Byrne, reach out to the classroom teachers, come up with something together that both of you guys could work out because we cannot afford to lose one child academically. I'm going to translate that real quick. So, Ms. Hernandez y Ms. Stewart um, dijeron que um, esos, esta tarea y trabajo sí les afecta. Um, y más que nada, tenemos que enfatizar que le tienen que echar ganas los estudiantes, porque al final del día, acuérdense que eso le va a ayudar a los estudiantes para que sean exitosos en el próximo grado. Algo que yo puedo compartir personalmente como, como niño, Yo falté mucho por razones de salud y se siente bien feo estar atrasado y no saber qué está pasando. 
so, sí cuentan mucho. So, por favor, sigan motivando a sus hijos y díganle a, los, a las mamás, papás, que hablen a la escuela para que hablen con los directores sobre una, sobre un plan. Uh, when I was just sharing high level, personally, as a, um, when I was younger, I was absent a lot because of health issues and it was really hard to get back on track. And so I don't wish that on anybody. So I said, continue to give it your all and we can all come out of this together. Echale ganas. Okay, tengo, uh, I have two people that I think may have wanted to speak. Uh, LG K30 or Galaxy and Prime. ¿Querían decir algo? Any other Hola, parent? Julio. Raisa, ¿Quería decir algo? Raisa Buenas Feliz. Buenas tardes. Buenas. Julio. ¿Cómo está? Bien, bien. ¿Quién es? Marta. Sí. Hola. Hola. Uh, ¿Puedo compartir un poquito? Sí, claro. Ok. Uh, buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Marta Pérez. Um, mis nietos van a Marvin Cambras. Y pues verdaderamente aquí en casa estamos contentos. Le doy gracias a, a los maestros que están día a día motivando a los niños. Y pues realmente... Pues mis nietos afortunadamente van muy bien porque ellos saben su lineamiento todos los días, su regla, ¿verdad? De estar este, en clase. Y yo pienso que, que aquí el problema somos los adultos, ¿verdad? Porque como comentábamos, pues en la actualidad yo le, le comento a Flor eh, y a la directora que aquí el problema, eh, y no es problema porque las madres jóvenes, ah, si saben entrar a el internet, ¿verdad? Entonces, ellas saben cómo entrar a, a clases o preguntar cómo se puede hacer, porque yo hago lo mismo, ¿verdad? Y pues yo creo que aquí es falta de concientización de los padres, disciplina, porque yo veo que muchos niños salen inclusive hasta con cobija, con comida. Y digo, ¿qué nos está pasando? Entonces a los niños tenemos que darles una rutina, unas reglas para que mm. ellos siempre estén ahí. Y pues yo invito a todos, pues sí se puede, se puede concientizar a los papás, hablar con ellos, necesitan algo para ayudarles, se les puede ayudar, ¿verdad? Y pues yo, honestamente, muchas gracias a los maestros por su esfuerzo. Uh -huh. uh, muchas gracias, Martita. Um, so this was Ma uh, Marta, she's a... Uh... Um, one of the parents over at Marvin Cameron, she was just saying, stating that um, that the parents have to step up, um, that they have a lot to do with it. And she was just sharing some anecdotal observations that sometimes in the classroom she sees like kids with like their sleeping blankets still on and like kind of like waking up and like eating cereal. Nothing wrong with that, but she was just saying like you know that wouldn't really happen in the actual in class like in the classroom. So like that, you know, saying we need to create a routine and a schedule. So gracias por compartir, Marta. Uh, we have time for about one or two more questions or comments. Thank you again to everyone for continuing to stay on. Um, I don't know if Raisa Feliz wanted to say anything. No sé si quiere decir sí, algo, Raisa. Sí, I just want to thank, you know, um, our staff from, from Schuber. They do an amazing job, and especially, you know, the teacher they do a very very good job i enjoy the class with my granddaughters uh every day so she got her notebook and i got my notebook so we sitting so i got challenge so whoever writes it more faster to make her she doing her job more easy and we i'm joined i'm doing i'm doing great and any time you know we need any question or any answer so 
they all will be there for us. So I'm very proud from all of them and I'm so happy. And she's doing so good. <laughs> Look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> she's so happy. She wake up every day in the morning. Oh, missing John. Come mm -hmm. on, hurry up, grandma. It's time, it's time to, hey. to start. <laughs> so we're doing good. Mm. Gracias. Raisa, ¿quería traducirlo rapidito? Uh, me siento uh, bien orgullosa de, de todos los maestros y de lo, lo, del staff de la, de la escuela. Cuando necesitamos ayuda, por, por el momento todo está muy bien. Pero cuando necesitamos algo, ellos siempre están ahí por nosotros hasta la fecha de hoy. Cuando también... Algo muy importante que no lo dije en inglés, pero voy a decir en español. Uh, con Marisela le agradezco mucho porque siempre está preocupada, siempre nos está llamando, si todo está bien, siempre está al pendiente, siempre al 100%. Eso es algo que le agradezco mucho. Y, uh, lo, y con mi nieta, pues tenemos un challenge ahí que tengo mi libreta y ella tiene su libreta, escribimos todos los días. Las mismas, ya, las mismas tareas, hacemos las dos, igual tarea, tam, vamos a la escuela las dos. Y ahí estamos escribiendo, a ver quién escribe más rápido y, y espérame que no me ganes. <ríe> y bueno, we, a lot of fun. Estamos muy, muy bien hasta ahora, gracias a Dios. Eso me olvidó decirle a Maricel. <ríe> Usted oh. diga la hora en inglés. <ríe> ok, um, thank you, Raisa. She was just giving an additional thanks to... Another fellow parent, colleague, friend, um, Miss Mercado. Um, so, you know, I think this is a good um, place to stop. You know, thank you again. Uh, we'll be back here next week to talk about um, social emotional learning, four o'clock, um, same time, same place. Vamos a estar aquí de nuevo la semana que viene. Va a ser la, es la primera de cuatro series. Vamos a hablar sobre aprendizaje de. Y no sé cómo traducirlo, pero social emotional. So, ahí le mandamos el link para que se conecten y para que escuchemos. Pasen la voz a los demás papás, que se conecten. Y los que no pudieron estar aquí, pásenle el video para que se pongan a ver algo productivo. Uh, Julio, ¿puedo sí. decir algo? Sí. Last words from Marta. Um. Se me pasó decirle lo mismo que dice Raiza. O sea, nosotros tenemos mucha comunicación con Flor, ¿verdad? Con la directora y pues con ustedes, contigo. Y pues eso se agradece mucho porque hay mucho interés sobre los niños que son los hombres del futuro y eso es lo que debemos de, de seguir continuando. Yo por mi parte, pues en lo que yo les puedo ayudar con mucho gusto, ¿verdad? Y pues muchísimas gracias, que Dios los bendiga a todos. Y hay que seguir adelante porque pues ayudar a las demás personas también. Uh -huh. Gracias, que estén muy bien. Um, gracias, Marta. And Miss, uh, Miss Marta was just saying, you know, continue to reach out to your principals and colleagues to work together. We still got an, a solid month left, so it's, you know, it's not over yet. So thank you again. I'll be sending out the link and all the other links. So thank you all so much. Thank you to all the principals, teachers, and parents. Gracias a los directores, maestros, y a los papás. Thank you all. Gracias a todos. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Bye. Bye. Muchísimas gracias. Adiós.